All right, so starting next week, uh, it is currently October 9th, middle of week six. Uh, starting next week, we actually get to start building some real stuff using full frameworks. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna be using is something called Django. So the next three days, we're just going to be talking about Django ORM, which stands for Object Relational Mapping. It's a way for Django to basically uh, wrap around SQL so that you don't have to type real SQL. Uh, who can tell me what the, what the most valuable thing in today's day and age is? Data. Data, yep. It's all about data. It doesn't matter what framework that you're using. Uh, if you could be using Django and Python, you could be using Rails and Ruby, you could be using Node and JavaScript, you could be using Spring and Java. It doesn't matter. Frameworks come and go, but everything at the end of the day is all about data. If you notice, you go on the web, it's one giant form. Like everything is one giant form. Obviously there are cool things you can do like Netflix and stuff like that and videos, but overall it's one giant form. When you place an order, it's a giant form. I want four of these, one of these, and one of these. Here's my credit card information, I'm gonna enter it and I press enter. It's a giant form. Everything is about data at the end of the day. So how do we get, like how do we store data? There's a couple of different ways. One of them is using what's called a SQL database. Where that, those are the things that we've been doing so far. We have rows and we have tables. It looks a little bit like a spreadsheet or you can conceptually think of it as a spreadsheet. And there's something called NoSQL databases, which we're not gonna focus on in this class. But essentially, it's just a giant hash of information. It's just one giant hash of information. So SQL is really good for most things. We're talking about like um, Amazon orders. We're talking about uh, basically any ordering system allrecipes.com, that's all stored as a, as a SQL database. But once you get into like huge, massive amounts of data that you need to query very quickly, think the DMV. What is one, one thing that every single car has that's always gonna be unique? Nope. Nope. Number. Uh, uh, a license plate could, could, have, could be duplicated over states, right? But a VIN number will always be completely unique. So imagine there's a giant cloud full of like information and all you need to do is just say like, here's the VIN number and you can get all the other information. Rather than saying, let's iterate through every single SQL record until we find the VIN number that we're looking for, then we have that row. One is a faster lookup. One's is, it's like, I'm looking up by a hash where I know the key and the other one's like looking up an array where it's like I have to iterate over everything to find the key. So today what we're gonna work on is uh, Django and Django ORM. Again, ORM. Object relational mapping. <clears throat> it's a way for Django to wrap around your SQL database so that you don't ever have to type in raw SQL. Yep. Mm -hmm. I am recording. So the first thing that we're going to need to do, and all of this is written inside of your uh, your curriculum for today, so I'm going to change over to the desktop and I'm going to create a <coughs> folder called uh, ORM example. I'm gonna CD into ORM example, so I have a nice place to work with. I'm gonna open that whole thing up in VS Code using code-r space dot. Uh, I don't really need this. So let's say that you're working for like a consultancy or you're working on a couple of different projects. Um, you're gonna to have to have an environment that is suitable for all of that. So you could be working on like a Greenfield project. The Greenfield is project is something that's brand new. So you might be using the most up-to-date technologies, but your workplace might require you to do something with like Python 2 and Django 1.0 rather than 2.0. How do you keep track of different versions of software in your machine? You know, how, how is it that like when I start coding in, um, when I start coding for my company, it's using Python 2.0 and the current version is Python 3.0. My personal projects is in 3.0, but my work is in 2.0. How do I keep track of the different versions? How am I supposed to have a, like, how do I make sure that everything doesn't blow up other things? We use a virtual environment? Yep, we talked about, did we talk about that already? No. Okay. We've used them for previous. Yeah, but that's exactly what it is. It's a virtual environment. These are basically containers that wrap around your project. Again, a lot of it is just like wrapping it in bubble wrap to ensure that whatever you install for your particular project within the virtual environment doesn't affect the rest of your um, computer. So uh, my sister recently uh, had a kid and now the kid is starting to eat at the, at the table. The, if you have a kid or you've been around babies, 
they drop food everywhere. They, you know, it's, you, you just have no idea how such someone so tiny could cause such an enormous mess. So uh, she's got a pretty nice table. It's from like West Elm or something like that. How do you protect your table from this tiny little baby? So what, what we'll do is she'll take a disposable like adhesive or something. It's like you, you take off the adhesive on the back and you put it on the table where the baby is eating. It's just like a placemat. And at the end of the, they, you know, the baby can throw whatever they want on the placemat. At the very end of the, uh, of the meal, she'll rip off the placemat, fold up all the junk, all the, you know, all the food that's dropped, all the liquid that dropped, and just throw in the garbage, unaffecting the rest of the table. And that's the way that I want you to view these virtual environments. It's basically, I'm putting a protective layer so it doesn't F up the rest of my computer. <clears throat> so there are three steps that we're going to need to remember to actually create a virtual environment. So first one is we're gonna to have to create it using Python dash M. Dash M stands for make. So it's basically saying using Python, I'm going to make a virtual environment called whatever I want. So Python dash M virtual environment, and then you name the virtual environment whatever you want. Most of the time, nine times out of 10, you're gonna call it that. Python, make a virtual environment called BENB. All right, so it's still creating it. You'll, you, you'll see it pop up here on the left-hand side. And at this point, I've created my virtual environment. There's a bunch of stuff underneath the hood that I don't particularly understand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to activate this virtual environment. I'm going to uh, essentially peel off the adhesive for the baby to eat on. The way that I do that is source, the name of the virtual environment, which is the second argument here, bin activate. And what you'll notice, when I type this in, is on the left side of this Code Platoon Instructors or what, whatever your name is right over here, there's something called, there's a parenthesis and BNB close parenthesis. This is different from these two lines up here. This is saying you are running within a virtual environment at this point. You've wrapped everything around with this, this bubble wrap. Whatever you install is gonna be in the context of this virtual environment and not affect the rest of your computer. Now, in the case that I wanted to deactivate it, I'm done developing for the day, I wanna move on to a different project, it's just deactivate, and you'll see that go away. But all I need to do, I'm gonna activate it for right now. So I have my virtual environment up and running, and I need to install Django and create a new project. So let's okay. call this project school. So I'm gonna do pip install Django. This is what this is doing is, it's, re it's reaching out to pip, which we installed on the first day, asking it to find a package called Django and install that on my machine within the context of the virtual environment. It's not gonna affect the rest of my computer. It just exists within this folder right over here. So yes. You have to reinstall it every time. I do need to reinstall it every single time. As, but once I install it once inside this virtual environment, once I activate it again, it's already there. All right. So I ran pip install Django and I want to start a project. So let me clear the screen here. So I'm gonna do Django admin, start project, and I'm gonna call this school. Django admin comes because I just pip install Django. It's something that's built in. And again, everything I'm saying is directly from your curriculum right over here. I'm gonna start a project called school. And you'll see within this ORM example folder, there's a virtual environment and a school project. Uh, so today what we're going to do is we're really going to focus on how the Python classes, the object-oriented programming that we use in Python, will basically connect to our database using Django or. So let's create a DB called school. How do I create a database? Start project, Start project is a keyword that's built into Django. Yep. All right, I'm going to call it school and something blew up. I did this yesterday, so it oh. says error database school already exists. How do I get rid of this database? Nope. Eh, it's drop. Drop DB school. It doesn't does it doesn't say anything, which means it probably works. So let's try creating this DB school one more time. And there we go. We don't have that issue that we had a little bit earlier. Let's just make sure that the school database exists. How do I use the psql command to uh, enter the school database. Okay, backslash b to get all of my tables. 
There's nothing in there. Makes sense. It's an empty database called school right now. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to install Psychop G. We did this last week or two weeks ago. This is the adapter for Python. So when I type Python, it translates into uh, Psychop G. Psychop G will talk to the database. I'm going to do. But you're still using raw SQL syntax within PsychopG. Yeah. Okay. So I'm installing PsychopG. Okay. Everything looks pretty good. It uh, installed PsychopG for me. You should consider using upgrading. Okay. That, that happens all the time. I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. It's still going to do the same thing. I did it Okay. We'll deal with that as it comes up. So let's take a look at the file structure on the left. We've got the virtual environment, and we've installed everything. We've installed uh, Django so far and PsychopG. So PsychopG and Python exist within this virtual environment. If I deactivate it, then that particular version of PsychopG and, and Django won't exist anymore. If I activate it, then it will exist at that particular point. And I started a project called school. Let's take a look at this file structure. School, and then another folder called school. There's four files inside of here. The init.py, this is what uh, Python needs, uh, what Django needs in order to basically initialize the file. It's gonna be empty like this. And then there's a URLs. We'll probably talk about this next week a little bit more. And then we have something called settings.py. This is where all the settings for your entire project are gonna come up. Now, if I scroll down, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I don't understand and it's already built in for me. But what I'm looking for are a couple things I'm gonna update quite often. One of them is gonna be called installed apps. The other one is gonna be called database. So what this database setting is saying is that I'm going inside, when I load up the school project, the Django project called school, it's looking inside the data inside of settings to figure out which database I'm going to be using. The default is what's called a SQLite database. We've used SQLite in the past. It's just a file that you interact with using SQL. But it's just a file. It's not a true database. So I'm going to erase this. And instead of having Django DB backend SQLite 3, I'm going to change the adapter to Postgres. So now I'm saying the database that's powering my Django school project is a Postgres database. <laughs> What's the name of my database? It's not whatever this is. We just called it school. Remember a little bit earlier we did create DB school. So I'm saying when you load this particular Django project called school, look for the Postgres database called school. I'm just basically telling it like where to look for it, all of its data. Any, any questions so far? You, you, uh, I remember having to use the with open and then explicitly kind of like, uh, describing the path as a string. Part you actually the don't need to anymore because it's the thing. Look, look for a Postgres database called school. That's it. It's looking in the entire machine for that. All right, so Django projects are split into many apps. So a project has many apps. So if you think about if you were in charge of a project at Amazon to like sell spaces on the moon to live at, a project can consist of many apps. So uh, you, there might be a billing app within the moon landing project where you can collect money from individuals. There might be a searching app to look up uh, for people to look up different lots that are still available. There is a VIP targeting app where they target VIPs, et cetera. So a project has many apps. In, very, in, real, in real life, if you think about Amazon as a giant project, think about how many services they have underneath Amazon, right? They have a, a one for billing, they have one for shipping, they have one for uh, video. Like there's many different apps that build up one entire project and that's how Django likes to think of things. And they monetize them too. They do always monetize on everything. So let me clear the screen. Earlier, we ran this command, Django admin start project school. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start an app called attendance. So 
gonna go here. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna CD inside of school, list out everything. There's that manage.py right over here, and then the school folder. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Python, manage.py, start app, attendance. So my school is, a, I, I, like I'm writing a project called school. It's, it's gonna, there's a bunch of things I can do within this giant app called school. The thing I'm gonna focus on right now is how do I create an, like attendance records? So I'm gonna run Python, manage.py, start app attendance. Using the Python command, inside this file, start an app called attendance. What you'll notice is that attendance pops up right over here on the left-hand side. This is an entire app that we're gonna be working on. We're not doing full Django quite yet. We're just, today's just about teaching the Django ORM and we're gonna repeat this over the next three days. We just wanna give you a taste of parts of Django and then on Monday we're gonna jump into Django. But it's a little bit much if we were to jump in and be like, here's all this magic behind the scenes. So we're just introducing a little bit now and then the rest will come next week. So Python managed start app attendance. And, uh, sorry, where is my terminal? There it is. Now, inside of school, there's this giant settings.py file. Now, settings is underneath the school project, and I created a new app called attendance. Back up here, there was something called installed apps. These are all the things that Django needs built in underneath the hood in order to actually execute things. But I'm gonna add in one more app called attendance. So a school might have an attendance app, a school, a school project might have an attendance app, it might have a grading app, it might have a detention app where you keep track of detention. Uh, but the first one that we're gonna create is this, just this attendance right over here. If I jump in within the attendance folder, you'll notice a bunch of different things. Init.py is an empty file that we need, and we'll talk more about this next week. Admin is if we wanted to do anything administrative, which we'll talk about more next week. There's tests, there's views. The thing we're focusing on today is models.py. Okay. We're gonna create our models inside of here. On the first line it says, from django.db import models. This is something that's built into the Django library, specifically the db like file. There's a class called models that we're bringing inside of here. This is that uh, inheritance thing that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Let's create a student. Student is gonna inherit from models.model. And what are some things that every single student at a school has? ID, name, okay. And then, uh, well, they, a, remember, a, when I create a table, ID is built in by default, but what else? They have a name, let's just do one more. Email. Email. How is a name stored? Remember when we were doing this in raw SQL, it was uh, create tables, students, uh, column, name, string or something. I don't, I don't really remember. There was like a whole bunch of different commands that we had to write using raw SQL. But what type of, what, what kind of data structure goes for a name? And somebody told me a string. Okay. It's like, it used to be like bar chart 255 or something like that. We don't have to type that anymore. All we gotta do is tip models dot char field, max length equals 255. It's a little bit easier. It's a little bit more readable. So we've got a class called student here, using our object oriented programming where the column name is e name and email. The types of data that you're gonna put in at that particular point is a char field, which is the same thing as bar chart. Just by doing this, this is all you need to write to create a, a student's table with these two columns inside of it. That's all that you need to do. And then the rest will more or less be taken care of through automatic, uh, through, through a series of commands that you're gonna run. But you don't have to write that huge SQL thing. What was it? Create table, table student. Name. And then it was like a name bar. Like you have to, you have to create this file, then you have to execute this file. Um, this will do everything for you. So I created a, a student model uh -huh. with a name and an email address. So right now it just exists as is. 
And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a migration. Python manage.py, you'll notice this Python manage.py uh, is going to be very common. Mm -hmm. And make a migration called attendance. What this command does is it's saying, hey, Python, inside the manage.py file here on the left, there is a command called make migrations. And I want you to make migrations for all of the models inside of attendance. A migration is basically a giant script of things that you need to do. So I'm just going to run this. Notice there is a migrations folder. There's nothing inside of it right now. There's just an empty init file. Once I run this command, on the left-hand side, you'll see that 0001 initial.py shows up. And this is something that's automatically generated. I don't understand what any of this is. It says operations, migrations, create model, name, student, fields, ID, oh, no, no, no. name, email. OK, that's maybe it, underneath the hood, this is just a bunch of operations. These are instructions that the uh, computer is going to do to actually move all of my stuff inside my database. But this was automatically generated. I didn't need to type any of this. All I needed to say was class called student, and these, this is the table name, and these are the columns. They're inside of there. Now, what you'll also notice, and I, I'll just briefly cover it and not, and we'll see it more next week, is right now it's 0001 initial. If I were to make any changes to the model, like I added on something like uh, uh, password mm -hmm. as another table on here, this would be 0002, and then it would, it would tell me a little bit about what I'm adding onto there. If you think about Amazon.com, what was the first thing that Amazon sold? Books. So when Jeff Bezos first started off, it was an online bookstore. That's all they sold. It was just books and it was just online. That was his whole vision behind Amazon. Since then, it's become a powerhouse. It sells other things, not just books, houseware stuff, kitchen stuff, uh, furniture, clothing, streaming services, food. They have everything. Now, imagine if you were to like, basically clone down the Amazon app and run a bunch of migrations. Like You can't get the database all at one time. What's going to happen then is that there, you're going to create a script for also known as a migration, basically running in order. The first migration that Jeff Bezos ever ran was probably something like create a table called books. Book has a, a title, an author, an ISBN number, and a price. Maybe, and then another migration might have been like create a table called users. Users have a name, an address, and credit card information. Create a table called orders. So what it does is it keeps track of the, the numerical value so that one runs before two, which runs before three, which runs before four. If, that, if, you, if it didn't run in that particular order and I said I wanted to create an order, an order has a book and it has a user, but that those user and the book don't exist yet, then that migration is going to blow up. So I want to keep track using these numbers over here. So we've created a migration, and now I'm actually going to migrate it into the database. So Python, manage.py, migrate. So let's re recap what we did. We created a model called student. This is the table. These are the columns. We told it to make a migration under the attendance app, which created this particular file. And then we migrated it into the database. Yeah. That's, what, that's this command that we ran over here. So let's just see what's inside of our database now. So I'm going to clear the screen, run over to PC equals school. That's what we had a little bit earlier. When I did backslash D, remember? Yeah. No, nothing exists. Backslash D again. There's a whole bunch of stuff. It's, uh, Uh, I don't want this. There's a whole bunch of stuff that comes in underneath the hood. There's 21 tables inside this table already just to get Django running. The thing that we're working, we're worrying about is attendance student. That's a table that we created. Attendance is the name of the app. Student is the name of the table that we created. Let's do backslash D, attendance student. And you'll see that we have that ID, that name, and that email. Character varying 255. It's a little bit easier, arguably. Argu it's arguably a little bit easier than writing raw SQL, but this will come in, like this will really come in handy in just a second when, when I show you something. 
question of the serialized says false. Uh, so if you keep adding values to the ID column. It, is it how does how does it generate? The, I'm not seeing where you're. I'm oh, not in seeing the, um, in the initial uh, initial dot py where, where it's. Where it's is that I actually I don't know what is going on here, but I will say that if I were to create multiple students, the ID does increase. Okay. Yeah. So let's backslash Q to get out of here. And I want to interact with my data using Postgres, but more, more often than not, I want to interact with my data using Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a console for our project that's going to pull in all of our Python classes, and then we can query the database using Django's ORM. So I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to run pip install Django extensions. It's going to call out to everything. You'll see that when we did the pip upgrade, that pip thing message did go away, Marcus. Pip install IPython. So I just, again, I'm installing a bunch of libraries using Python. It's saving it inside of this virtual environment over here. There's that, there it is. You'll see that IPython showed up there. There's Django admin. There's a bunch of other stuff that I don't understand. All right, so I installed two things, Django extensions, but I need to register that as an app over here as well. So I'm just gonna add that Django extensions. Certain things that you install are apps, certain things are you just kind of have to know. It's unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to run python manage.py shell plus dash dash i python. So what this is doing is it's entering a python shell, just like if I were to go to here and just type in python. I'm, I have a python interpreter shell right over here. But what this command does is that it loads in all of the models that we need as well. So you'll notice that right away it runs these commands from attendance.models import student from the attendance app, the models file, import the student class. And it's bringing in a whole bunch of other stuff that we may or may not need. This is the big one right over here. We want to bring the student in. Someone told me about, like, if I wanted to create a student with the name of John and the email of john at john.com, what would the SQL look like for that? Insert, Insert to students, name, email, values, john, and john at john.com. Mm -hmm. A little verbose, kind of annoying. Not This is like raw SQL. The way that I do this inside of uh, using Django ORM is student equals student, name equals John, <coughs> and email equals john at john.com. So we're used to this. We have a variable called student, the class called student, and I'm passing in two arguments, name and email, and it's automatically going to create that for me. So let's uh, comment these out so we don't blow things up, and let's just copy this inside of here. So if I type in student again, there's that student. It's an entire object at this point. Can I do student.name? Gives me John. If I do student.email, gives me john at john.com. What you'll notice is that this says object and then none. So this student exists in memory right now, but it's not saved inside the database. So what I'm going to do to save it is just do student.save. And if I type in student one more time, You'll see that student object is now one. It's actually been saved into the database. Is that, the ID? ID. that is the ID number. Let's take a look. Let's exit out of here and let's verify. I'm going to clear the screen. P SQL school. It's essentially it's a instantiated container class that will generate um, like uh, a row of the database. Correct. So backslash, let's do a select star from attendance students, I believe that's what it's called. Student. There it is. One John, John at John.com. There's no magic here. That's one thing I will really want to point out. There is no magic when it comes to object relational mapping with Django ORM. When you type this in and then you do student.save, yeah. when you run this command and then this command, 
this is what's happening underneath the hood. No magic, but it's a little bit easier to type than typing all of this. Sure, that makes sense. The dot save takes the instance of two and it stores it as SQL. Yes, okay. exactly. So this first line here, when I ran it a little bit earlier, student equals student name and email here, I'm just creating an object, a Python object. It exists in my computer's memory, and then once I exit, it'll be gone forever. The moment I do dot save, this, this command is actually executed. All right, let's take a look at what challenges we have for today. I wish I had more time, because this is a fun day. But we have three days with three challenges. I would recommend doing one challenge per day unless you're super, super smart and can do all three in one day. Uh, the first one is going to be called Django Queries. This is an extraordinarily annoying uh, uh, challenge. What we've done, sorry. Essentially what we've done is we've created a bunch of tests for you to work with a single model called product, a single table inside the database. You are going to spend most of today just Googling a ton of crap. Um, okay. There are ways that we can filter out different things. There are things we can, basically, there are ways that we can query for data using raw SQL. For instance, let's say that I wanted to get all of my, how do I select everything from the student's table in raw SQL? Well, Cool. That, uh, sure. Actually, no, it should be students because it, it's, it's, the table name should be plural because there's many records of that particular thing inside of it. So select star from students. Another way to write it inside of Django is going to be student.objects.all. So underneath the hood, when you run student.objects.all, it's just doing this, it's executing this. But there is an object student object relational mapping. So I'm mapping, when I type in this Django ORM like query, underneath of it, it's running this. How about if I wanted to find um, the, last, the last student in the database? Select star from students, order by ID, descending, limit one. That's a lot of stuff to type, right? Student dot objects dot all dot last. Yeah. Underneath the hood, when I run this particular code, it's just doing this. And these are just some examples. When I jump over here, you'll see that there are, there's a filter, there's an exclude, there's an order by. If you were to write these in raw SQL, you definitely could. It would take a little bit more time. But if you were to do it using the Django ORM and just kind of look for things, then you'll be able to write a little bit less code that will do the exact same thing. Yep. So. My recommendation um, here, run through this setup. We're going to clone, we're going to fork, we're going to clone and set this up. We're going to create a virtual environment. We're going to activate that virtual environment and install all the requirements. The requirements.txt file is basically a text, it's a text file with all of the dependencies that you're going to need here. Django, Psychop, PyYAML, red, green, unit test so that you can see what, what's failing and what's not. When I do pip install dash r requirements.txt, it's basically going inside of here and installing all of those versions and all of those libraries rather than going pip install Django, pip install Psycop, pip install PyAML, pip install Red Greek Unit Test. I just list all of them out here and install them all at one time. And pop in some specific version. Yeah, exactly. And then once you set up the app, your goal is to get all the tests passing. That's all that you're going to do today. And I would recommend you can compare if you want to. Um, you're going to CD into ORM queries. And then we've set it up so that all you got to do is run Python, manage tests, and you're going to have a bunch of tests fail. At that time, you're basically going to go inside of uh, uh, the product CRUD class mm -hmm. using, the product, using the queries that you've got here and write methods that use the queries to get the data that you need. In the order that in the order that they're presented. So if I go inside of ORM queries over here, and I go inside of ORM queries, and from queries, products, there is a test.py. I believe there are 16 tests. Nope, 19 tests. 
So it's basically, can you write me a, inside of product CRUD, there should be a method called get all products. Well, when using that, can you get me all the products? So we already did it. Some of these have the answers inside of them. Product, product.objects.all will get you all the products. If you continue going down to like uh, test number 16, it returns the average. So I want to, let's say that I, uh, I want to find the average category rating for the baby. Uh, I expect it to be 2.32. It's gonna be a actual number. So one of these methods will help you basically get all of them and then average that particular column together. Don't look at the test. Don't, don't look at the test. Code the yeah, don't hard code the answer. Um, or find by rating and color. You find the products by the rating and the color value. So it looks like a product has a rating and a color on there. So I'm going to, I want to find all the products that are above 3.5 and that are maroon. This is it's actually what we do in real life as well. So it's kind of like, I want all of the five star products on Amazon that have a thousand reviews or more. You know, like all of that kind of stuff underneath the hood is using uh, either raw SQL or an ORM to translate into SQL. Uh, that's all that I had. I'm going to stop recording here.